<laughs> we ain't gonna start off like this. Okay, ready, set, go. Hey! Hey guys! We're back! It's been almost a year, but we're back. Hey, hey girl. girl. I love you. I'm still putting up with this. <laughs> We are here to give y'all some life inspiration for 2014 because y'all bitches have lost y'all minds since we've been gone. Y'all have been thotting it up out here in these streets. Me and Mo are back to save you. <laughs> she really bitch. just caused somebody a thought. <laughs> thought <laughs> right, well, I got my trust no bitch earring, but don't trust none of these bitches. Um, let's get into our first question of 2014. We have not done this since 2013, you guys. And that question was like from what? May 6th. I'm sorry if y'all done died or killed yourself. We are so sorry, but we've been over here writing books and editing books and creating television shows and trying to be cute. And starting, trying to start companies and all kinds of shit. We're trying, trying to be really sorry. Right. Please don't kill yourself waiting on us. We are here. Just pray to Blue Ivy. And Not if you sent us a question a long time ago and you still want us to answer it, just resend it. Because please. Because some of those ones before, I think I didn't go back. I only went back to like the middle of April. Yeah, so we're sorry. Please unkill yourself. Okay, first question is from Tori. Hey, Tori. She says, hey, ladies, I love your videos. You, you're you both two gorgeous women. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, well, my question is for Keisha. Okay. I'm 17. I'm a new author as well as a new blogger. I just want to know how you got your blog uh, fan base to be so big in such a short amount of time. I can't wait for my fan base to be as big as yours. If you can give me any tips and advice, that would be wonderful. And by the way, my blog address is successfulqueens.wordpress.com. Uh, so, um, uh, well, yeah, I just... Uh, well, it took time for me to honestly get my social. Mm, that's a lie. Um, it really didn't take me much time to get a fan base on social media because I've had a career as an author, so that's where majority of my fan base came from. Um, but you just have to be consistent. You have to continue to promote yourself, let people know about your blog or uh, what else you said. Um. And your books. You just honestly have to promote yourself wherever you go and let people know what you're doing. Just stay active on social media. Stay connecting to different authors and different um, friends and stuff online. And when you're out and about, have your cards with you so you can pass them out to people while you're out. If, you know, I used to just walk up to people and say, hey, you like to read books? Here's my card. Check out my books. And that's how I built up my fan base as far as my books are concerned. So... And another thing is, I've seen a lot of people do this with not just books, but makeup and all kind of different products. Maybe doing like a, a social media contest. Oh, yeah. Contests are great. Yeah. People love free shit. I know I do. Yeah. Especially we still people. waiting on y'all to send us our bundles. Bundles. And what else? I want some Peruvian wave. I don't know what the fuck that is, but it sound right. What you want for you? <laughs> Whatever you got. I wear a size 10 inch. We'll shit. take wigs too. We see them you pour wigs. Oh, hell yeah. We'll pour out her. If you got some gloss you want to see on Mo's big lips. Shit. Yeah. I need some concealer. Yes, God. We will. Ooh, Mo don't need this, but I want a pair of them booty lifters, the booty lifter girdles. How come I don't need that? Nigga, no. That's not even right. That's no. That's like the sun. Outshining the moon, yeah, nigga. No, <laughs> <laughs> I need the booty lift. So send me one of them, and we want the waist trainers. We want, yeah, cause we want all of it. Send it to askishainfo <laughs> at yahoo.com. Okay, she say hi, ladies. I watch your show, and I think you two are amazing. Recently, I watched a web series, and it was amazing. Thank you. You worked so hard on it. While I haven't been in this, the situation, I pass it on to my girls. Anyway, I graduated last year with my BA and I'm currently working on my master's. I'm 23 and I'm the youngest of three. Also, I'm the first of my mom's kids to graduate and the first of a host of cousins to graduate. Go ahead on. Being in college has been amazing and an OMFG experience as well. First, my family is my life, literally. literally. In college, I've sent money home to pay bills and I've been their rock. It's been a mental drain in undergrad and I've made better decisions during my time in grad school. My issue is that I don't feel like my family is supportive. Granted, many of them do not understand because they haven't experienced it, but a little support would be great. I've had the conversation with multiple people, but it doesn't change. I'm thinking about moving away, but I don't want to be that person who gets their education and leave and have their family feel like I think I'm better than them. Girl, bye. 
I just need more support from them, a text, phone call, or something. It's hard when I have people in my corner who are not my family. For my graduation, I had to constantly remind my dad, and I had to spend a lot of money to provide transportation for my mom and family members to come. But my mom and dad constantly brag about my accomplishments. I guess my question is, what would you suggest that I do? I tell my mom this all the time. She'll ask me how my day is on one day and then call and complain the next. I wrote my dad a letter months ago expressing myself, and he has been extremely distant distant sense i'll write in with another question if that's okay but i just want my family support or acknowledgement help ladies monique you take this one because you know all about it okay i told you okay this is the girl that uh emailed me but uh personally i don't think that you can't expect for anybody to support something that they don't understand they don't even know that they need to support you and if you're trying to fail you're doing the right thing and that's worrying about what other people think about you and worrying about other people supporting you. You have to support yourself. I'm Ooh. sorry, it's the hard knock life out here. If that's the one thing that I've learned in life is that nobody is going to support you like you support yourself. Got that right. And, and Jesus, that's right there, honey. And and I know my friends, they all for me, but the truth of the matter is we're all adults. So they can't give to me like I can give to myself because they got their own shit to worry about. But for somebody who doesn't even understand like the path that you're or the road that you're on they they don't know to support you they don't even know to do it so they don't know how mm -mm. and that comes with anything that you do it doesn't even have to be school it could be your job or anything period me and Monique talk about all the time how we get phone calls from mama grandmama cousins sisters brothers my son about people just don't care what the hell you got going on in your life they only are concerned mm -hmm. about what the fuck they got going on in theirs and that's just how people the fuck are yeah um so i mean you can be there as much as you can but at the end of the day you have to take care of you because you are all the fuck that you got at the end of the day when you become an adult ass woman so do what you have to do in school encourage yourself um do what you can with your as far as your family as far as uh financial and emotionally That's but not you cannot yeah you cannot uh not overstress your yourself to take care of the grown people um and you just got to be your own support system and pray about it you just can't expect or assume anything from other people you just can't okay this question is from hudson hey guys i have been with the same guy for the last six years there have been times where we live together and times where we have not during this time, his younger sister had a daughter and has been struggling ever since moving from house to house and at one point at a shelter. Mind you, her daughter is only three. There was a time where she lived with me from April to August where she had ample opportunity to get her shit in order. However, I had to ask her to leave, then she goes to live in a shelter from August to January. She received extensions many times and they were even going to help her find a place to live. Needless to say, she was yet again asked to leave. To make a long story short, since the shelter she's been to her dad's, since the shelter she's been in her dad's and now lives back with her brother, my boyfriend and I lives rent free. My boyfriend lives rent free and still cannot provide for herself adequately. Mm -hmm. Tell us something was wrong with her, but go ahead. But my boyfriend feels obligated to help her because of his niece but I feel like as long as she has a crush to lean on she'll never understand she'll never stand on her own I really don't have a question more like needing advice because I don't know how much longer I can be supportive first of all you can turn yourself way too much with your boyfriend family I'm sorry that ain't none of your responsibility none of your business that is his family's business that is just your boy friend Man. that is not your husband y'all better stop taking all husband responsibilities with these niggas and they just your boyfriend you might not even know this nigga this time next year whatever's going on with this trifling ass girl is her goddamn business that ain't none of your sister you let that man and his family worry about what's going on and they family stop offering up your goddamn house to this girl you don't know her like that i feel sorry for her and her baby but that is her responsibility and the family needs to rally around her and that will not even hurt that baby and somebody needs to you know get that baby but other than that that ain't none of your damn that's business good. that's what i was going to say if <clears throat> and if it's a situation where because i can kind of uh, i'm just thinking about my sister but i can't really put myself in that situation because my sister is so responsible and she takes care of her business but even if your boyfriend is the type of man like you just want to, you know, this is a good dude, you want to be with him, you need to talk to him. You need to say, hey, I got an issue with this. This is, you know, let him know where you, what you want out of your relationship and where you want it to head to. And if she is hindering that, she got to go. And, and I mean, I mean, I hate to give people an ultimatum, but shit, you got to choose. It is me or her. 
I don't even think it's that deep because at the end of the day, you got your own place. Why can't you just come up your house? Like they live together. They they live together. I'm guessing they do. Mm. They live together. There have been times where we live together and times where we have not. Okay. Start, okay. So if this is one of the times where y'all ain't living together, then you need to mind your damn business. I'm sorry, you're doing way too much for me. I think you're way too involved in his family. That's what I how I feel. Um, see, if y'all not living under the same roof right about now, then you have nothing to say. Now, if y'all under the same roof as of right now, then yeah, you need to tell him, homegirl gots to go. Point blank, period. She gots to roll. Her and that baby gots to go. I love them, but, uh, as long as I'm paying light, electric, and it's, uh, high-ass rent, then Laquisha and Renee gots to go. Sorry. <laughs> Next question comes from Jamila. I don't think she wanted to. Oh, yes, yeah, she did. Okay. I'm just saying first. Um, hello, Miss Avery. My name is Jamila, and I'm 21 years old. I'm an aspiring author in Charlotte. Um, I like to say that you are truly an inspiration. I love that you are so down to earth, and your books have truly carried me through over the years. I picked up my first Ir Keisha Irvin novel, Hold You Down, in the seventh grade. Oh, my God, y'all making me feel so old. And I still read to this day. Oh yeah. As a compulsive She's 21, it was <laughs> I'm so old. As a compulsive reader of all genres, I hate a boring reader. Your books never disappoint and I truly appreciate your voice for girls and women of all sorts. Thank you. Who run the world, girls? Who run the Okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm raised your Instagram <laughs> messages today. You think you Beyonce got the plans? Fuck you. <laughs> okay. As I stated before, I love to read and I've always tried to write my own book, but I've always been nervous and not sure if the outcome. But with the support of my family and good faith, I bravely made this decision to begin writing my first novel. Hey, hopefully, uh, many of my not. Hopefully, oh, hopefully, many of what? Wait a minute, writing my first of many novels and I was wondering what kind of advice you may have for a young woman trying to make her dreams come true uh I'm just gonna end up doing a video on how to get published because y'all kind of get up my nerves with these questions look at Jesus I was being wrong I was being mean look at Jesus look at Jesus look at Jesus won't he do, it? At Jesus. Won't he do it I'll forgive me father but y'all do get on my nerves with these damn questions um honestly <laughs> You all have to write from the heart. I say this time and time again. Be your own self. Don't try to copy anybody else's style. Um, be original. Um, not be original. Dare to be different. Um, and you just have to get online and do your research. Just like you asked me how to write a book. That's what Google is for. How to write a book. Thousands and thousands of websites will come up telling you how to publish, how to write a book. You just have to do your research. You have to believe in yourself. Do your research on the, the industry. You're going to make mistakes as we all do. You're going to have to learn from them like I did. Um, you can't really have anybody take you through this and guide you and hold your hand. But um, you just have to believe in yourself and know that your work is good. Um, and honestly, have people around you that will tell you whether or not it sucks or if it's good or not. I mean, being honest with you. Because some stuff I write, I need to be like, bitch, you were sleepy when you wrote that. <laughs> No, you know what? <clears throat> you said something today when we were talking earlier about uh, what's the new book you write? Pure Hero? Mm -hmm. And it helped me with Moisms because a lot of people who have not written a book before, they have all these ideas and everything that they want to put in it. They just don't know how to start it. Yeah. You said outline. Oh, yeah. You, you don't know how outline. much that, because I got this notebook <laughs> full of notes. <laughs> and you just don't know how much to help me with starting shit. Yeah, because Monique is writing her first book, which will be published through my publishing company, Call Me Pink Publish uh, Publication. We will be accepting uh, manuscripts soon, but not yet. Don't get to sending us nothing yet. We'll let y'all know. Um, and I'm helping her through the process. And one of the things that I wanted to do with creating my own publishing company is for people out, out there like you all that want to get published and don't want to get used and abused by these raping ass publishers, these Jerry Sandusky ass publishers. Ain't that his name? Yeah. All you have to do is say yeah. My booty hurts. <laughs> and I want to give people the opportunity to make a good living for themselves and to have their work out there to the masses and to really understand what the literary world is all about and really have somebody behind them that actually cares about them and their work. So Monique is our, my first guinea pig, if you will. 
and her book uh, will be out this fall and it's going to be all about teaching you basic bitches out there how to love and how to be respected and not to fall for a bunch of bullshit when it comes to these niggas. And I won't even say basic bitches. It's not women and our guys too because yeah. I know they get, they get dealt some shitty hands Yeah, because there's a lot so. of whack ass bitches out yeah. here that need Jesus. So, um, like I said, just believe in yourself, do your research, and we'll have more on Color Me Pink publications soon. The next question says, I have a serious question. I tried to email you. I need your honest answer. Um, I have a homegirl now. Every time my nigga be around, this bitch always mad. <laughs> she called and said she was coming over cool. So, my dude dropped by for a minute, and it says, a minute. To bring me something. So when she pulled up, his car was in my driveway. She instantly got upset, called me with an attitude and said she gone. She gone. Then skirted off. Please help me understand why this bitch mad. She only mad. She only be mad when I'm with a good dude that looks out. When I was with my ex that treat me like shit, she was happy. Only somebody I know was that skirted. <laughs> that's a St. Louis thing. He skirted. I'm dying laughing. I can't even answer the question so funny. Oh my god. You said you had a good one for this one though. Read it again. No, I said no, let me go back. You answer first and then I go. Um, I think you said that she's only good when you got a dude that didn't treat you like shit she was all for. Some people just misery loves company and some people don't like to see you happy. I'm a conspiracy theorist. To me, it just seemed like she just there might be something going on between them two. It's just, it's just weird. It's weird. It's very single white female-ish. Because I might not like my friend's boyfriend. I'm not going to leave him. I'm coming over there just because his ass is there. Hi, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. I don't give a fuck. So, it seems like some weird shit is going on. Either she wants you or she wants him. She's just weird. I know what she is. Her ain't got no man. And even if she do got a man, he probably ain't shit. Mm -hmm. The thing is... And this is just honest to God truth. I don't give a fuck who loves you or who you think might care for you. When People want you to be happy, but they don't never want you to be happier than them. And that's just what it is. Well, miserable bitches. Yeah. Miserable bitches, whoever. That's just what it is. And I don't know what it is about your dude that she doesn't like. A lot of people, and, and I've noticed that like, when you get into a good relationship and it's time to build, build with that. And the whole point of it is, like, I don't know what y'all working towards, too. But, like, some people, they, I mean, some people want to be a girlfriend forever. Some people might want to get married. Whatever the fuck your goal is, you cannot keep putting your friends into the situation first all of the damn time. It has to be some type of understanding. The line has to be drawn. Because at the end of the day, if they end up being your motherfucking husband, you can't be outside your house worrying about what's going on. You, it's right at home. Yeah. And that comes first. Point blank period. If she got an issue with it, then she just can't fucking come around. And you happy? Emily, do you being miserable for about it? I would confront her and ask her what's going on, what's the deal, because you don't understand why. So I think that you need to take the time, one time, one time only, and ask her what is the deal, what is going on. Explain to me why you don't like him. Is it some, Has he done something to you? Has he said? Because you never know. Niggas these days are sneaky. Maybe he came on her, or maybe she didn't came on him. It's something weird going on with this whole situation. Y'all probably around each other all the time, and here come this nigga that's been real nice to you and treating you the way you deserve to be treated and shit like that. She don't like because she missed her friend. We like, we sense. can't hang around each other all the time. We can't talk all the time. Because you're all up under his motherfucking chin and arm every night. Yeah, so maybe, you know, y'all need to talk. You, I think you need to talk to her um, in a calm, pleasant manner when it's just you and her. Go out to lunch and ask her what's Or up? she does want you. Yeah, <laughs> so, I why would you skirt off? Because I ain't skirting off. That's why I said I'm coming in. Fuck that. So she might want your but movie. She, I don't know what that's all about. And I just honestly, I mean, even if... That was just... I am just... <laughs> Disgusting. What the fuck just happened? Why do you not do that so well? <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> this update is from Nay. Hey Keisha and Mo, it's been a nice little minute, but I'm writing to give you guys an update. Since you ladies answered my question, a lot has happened. I am in school now, majoring in social work, minoring in psychology, and I have moved into my own place. Although me and my boyfriend are still together, things are completely different. I moved out and I no longer do the things I used to. By me moving out and getting my own place, a lot was lifted off my shoulders. I realized what you all were saying. I was getting all the stress and head headache while the other women were headache free. 
Now things have changed. I no longer have those female, female issues, nor am I stressed or upset. Honestly, I'm so focused on me, I don't even take the time out to think about fuck shit. We go places, we do things, I go visit him, he come visit me, and I love it that way. I just wanted to give you beautiful ladies an update. What's your input? Is this the girl that was having female problems? It's been so long, I don't remember. And I remember a question about a girl, from a girl that I was I don't having. remember the question, but just from... Really? <laughs> See, you know what? And this is the sidebar. I'd be so upset when we be conducting business and shit and Beyonce come on from a text message from my phone. It was for next door, but <laughs> what the fuck ever? It's supposed to be on silent when you open when you step into business places. Anyway, oh my god, I can't take up nowhere. What's your input? Um, I, I, I honestly don't remember. It's been so long, so forgive us. Uh, we've had a lot going on, but we're just happy to hear that you're doing well, that you're um, in a happy place, you're doing you. So just keep it up. Whatever you've been doing, keep at it. Just stay prayerful, and we're proud of you, and keep us updated. Thank you so much for even updating us at all. I have something totally different to say. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember the question, which is based on your answer. Whenever there's other women involved, you're headed in the wrong direction, boo. You just are. It's a waste of time. Oh, I totally missed it. What the fuck? Where she said, I realized what you all were saying. I was getting all the stress and headache while the other women were headache free. That is the girl. She was having female problems and he was fucking other bitches. Remember you told her that's why her insides hurt because he be fucking her too. It was, I kind of remember you. I think you the girl. I don't know if that's it. Somebody. Yeah, but yeah, you need to drop that shit. You know, you Keisha would give you a false STI. <laughs> I don't know if that was your story. Well, anyway, the, 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 if there's other women, yeah, you bye. need to let that go. Bye. You need to let that go because, I mean, you don't have you you have to keep yourself busy so you don't have to worry about fuck shit. What kind of life is that to live? Sure. Where you can't just have an easy breezy free ass day and not worry about anything. It should not be no other women. It just should not. Sure I don't know why. Is. I don't know why we have to continue to prove or say stuff to people about it shouldn't be no other, it should not be no other fucking women. It shouldn't be no other women. Even with friends, even with friends, you know that they're just friends. It's just shit about them friends that they shouldn't get that you get. And y'all shouldn't even be on the same fucking level. So when there's other women, you're wasting your time. Period. Because he gets to pick and choose from the buffet. Yeah. And nobody, if we y'all go places and shit like that, he doing what the fuck he want to do. Y'all, y'all in an open relationship. Mm. If this, you know, if this shit is still going on. And, I'm like, and that was a question from, there was an update from what, like April? Yeah. Let us know what's going on now. I would re I really would like, because April it was still kind of cold outside. It's July, it's hot in the motherfucker. I would really be interested in knowing what he's doing right now. since the ass is still falling out. Mm -hmm. I just want to know. Because at the end of the day, majority of times when these guys have other women, these girls be thinking that they being faithful. You, the women end up being faithful to this man mm -hmm. that are seeing multiple women. You know? Yeah. That was great. I'm so happy we're back. Send us some Thank questions, you know, please, question. to ask Keisha and Mo at Yahoo.com. We'll be filming back again on the regular. We missed you guys so much. Thank you for all the uh, messages that we've gotten on social know. media. I asking where is Ask Keisha Mo. We not know y'all fuck with us like that. I we know. told y'all we're no shit. So. Stay tuned. What we got coming up? We got Jenny show. Oh yeah, we have uh, uh, our friend Jennifer Lavette's new show, Junk in My Trunk, is where she goes thrifting and she finds yeah, great thrift store items for dirt freaking cheap. Directed by me. We have uh, oh, thank you once again for you all watching Forever Twenty One. Yes. The second half of season one will be back in uh, November, so stay tuned. That will be filming. I have uh, Material Girl Three and Casual Mafia out in stores right now. Uh, the sequel with me and my boyfriend, Pure Heroin, is coming out soon. Monique has her own show on YouTube coming. Everybody loves Mo, plus her new book. Boys and About to kill the game, nigga. Who run the world? We made you. <laughs> All right, fools. We out. Bye.